So I watched the Pokemon show a long time ago in a galaxy far, far away. Back in my day, if you wanted to make a Pokeball, you had to take Apricorns to Kurt in Azalea Town to get him to turn them into some special Pokeball. But what I want to show you is how you can turn a 15 inch table round into a piece of Pokeball wall art like this for your friends, for your family, for whoever's throwing around the Gigantamax Pokeballs these days that are basically this size anyway. But you can put this in your bedroom, you can put this in your game room. The possibilities are really endless. You're going to want to go to your local home improvement store and buy a 15 inch table round. Now, what I had to do from this point, and you don't have to do this step, you can just go down into the description, you can find my blog, and you can find a Pokeball Dimension Calculator that I've put together. It's a Google Sheet document, it's really great. But what I had to do is I had to buy, nobody forced me to do this, I had fun doing this, I had to buy a Pokeball 10, and I actually took measurements off that 10 with these digital calipers to determine what the proportions needed to be for my wood Pokeball. So if you want, you can go to the description, go to the blog link, you'll find that Pokeball calculator I'll put together so that you can determine the dimensions that you need for whatever size Pokeball you're trying to make, whether it's 15 inches like this one, or whether it's 24 inches like I made with my Captain America shield. Go ahead and find the center of whatever board you're looking to work with. So since I was using a 15 inch board, I went ahead and measured seven and a half inches over uh, from the center and marked that location. And I drilled a small hole so that I could pivot uh, what I was using to make these cuts with. Now this is also a decision point for you because you can decide to either just paint on, basically mark and paint where these different dividers need to go, like for the for the button in the center, for this black ring, for the black trim around it, or you can do what I have done and engrave actually into the wood those those uh, surfaces and definitions. So this is a, de is a decision point. If you want to use a Dremel like I did, you can do that. But hopefully you can see the definition there. Almost looks like the Death Star, you know, trying to trying to fly through and and hit the target at the trench. But all that to say, this is the decision point for you. If you want to Dremel, you can definitely watch me go through that process. If you don't want to engrave the wood, you can go ahead and skip ahead and see how I finish this with wood stain. So after I located the center of this, this piece of wood and actually drilled a hole there, I took my Dremel, as you can tell, I adjusted that Dremel's width to, or radius to various lengths to be able to cut out these holes. And then I actually ended up just hollowing out these areas by continually manually adjusting the uh, Dremel uh, width in order to get that. Hopefully you can see this on the camera, but the middle button here, you can tell that I actually have this at the same level as the red and white surface for the top. I also, uh, for the button surrounding, or for the material surrounding the middle button, I actually, you know, because sometimes you have to hit the button to make the Pokeball, you know, shrink or grow large. Um, but this is the, the middle ring that also gives it some more definition. This is actually raised up from the black surface. The black surface is all at the same level and that's the lowest point on all the engraving that I did is that black surface. So I'm actually going to go ahead and cut the channels uh, for the black definition around the edges as you can see there, this right here. So I use the Dremel, I use my level as kind of a straight edge to try to cut straight lines, but somehow I still managed to mess it up. So I actually had to go back in and you'll see in a minute, I had to go in after I had hollowed out those spaces and I actually had to use wood filler to fix that. So that was a learning experience for me. But what I ended up doing is I switched out my bits. I was using just a regular um, cutting bit for my Dremel. I actually switched to a wood engraving bit and hopefully you can see that on the end as I'm going through. And I actually used that to kind of smooth everything out, hollow out the remaining spaces and get all of this cut out. And then I went back with the sanding bit to try to get everything a little bit smooth. So I didn't want to have everything perfectly smooth because I think those ridges uh, on that black surface help add some definition to uh, those areas, but I did want to get it a little bit smoother than it was. So I just went back in and sanded it all down and you'll see here I actually went ahead and added the wood filler. Went ahead and used the wood filler in the center to fill, fill in the hole that I drilled to be able to spin my compass around if you will. Uh, but I also went ahead and straightened out my lines and after that wood filler it had about two hours to dry. I went back and I took a sanding pad and just sanded everything down and flush so that when I finished it off it would look good. So once I had done my engraving I moved on to staining. Now of course at this point you can decide if you want to stain or if you actually want to just paint it. I chose to stain because I think that that wood texture really adds some definition to the Pokeball. I will say after finishing the project 
I've considered trying to go back and experiment with some metallic paint to get more of the metallic sheen of, you know, the Pokeball tin. So you might see a future video on using metallic paint on wood, so stay tuned for that. But uh, the process of staining is very similar in every other project I've done. You want to put the pre-stain on first. After you put the pre-stain on and let it sit for about two minutes, you want to wipe off the extra. And then you want to go ahead and proceed with your staining. So after you stain, what you're going to do is you're going to let it sit on there for a couple of minutes. You're going to wipe off any extra stain to kind of get the, the depth of color that you want for the piece. And you're going to let that stain dry. Now, if you want to put on a second coat, you're going to wait about an hour and then do that second coat. So on my piece, the main areas I did a second coat on were actually the red surface because I wanted a very rich red. And I actually did do a second coat on the black just to make sure that all that wood was, was very well hidden. But the white was pretty much one coat and done. So you just basically determine how many coats you want to do based on how vibrant you want that color. But once you achieve the color, you let it sit. I generally let it sit overnight. You don't have to, but I do to make sure that it has enough time to, to cure. And you come back and then you actually put on the sealer. Now for this project, I did use polycrylic and I did use a brush this time instead of using a spray can. So I just worked in small sections, got it on there. I did two total coats, but by doing that, it has given it the sheen that you can see, you know, reflecting the light as I turn it. So yeah, that's how you apply the polycrylic. So just to give you the before and after, I did not finish the back so you can see what the back looked like. This is the table round that you would buy straight from the home improvement store. And then you flip it around, and you have a Pokeball. So now you're ready to go deploy your Gigantamax Charizard or anything like that. Um, it's been a little while since I've played a Pokemon game, but all that to say, nice project. If you know someone in your life that likes Pokemon, this would be a great thing to, to give them for the holiday season or anything like that. So definitely consider making this. And I hope that the instructions that, that you'll find on my blog, as well as the items listed below are helpful to you. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out and leave a comment. If you like the content, I would ask that you subscribe to the channel. Maybe drop a like on the video if you actually like Pokemon, like a lot of people in the world do. So as always, thanks for tuning in and time to go catch some Pokemon. I was editing my video and my wife comes into my studio, my basement, and <laughs> says, you look like you're going camping. I'm obviously Ash Ketchum. Like, come on, I'm Ash Ketchum. But in all seriousness, if you're still around and you want to know how to hang the Pokeball that you just created, it just so happens I've created a video on command strips and how to use them to hang pictures. Command strips currently hang my Captain America shield. I guarantee you that they can hang this Pokeball. So if you want to learn how to use those uh, to hang something such as this, check out that video, how to hang command strips. How, how to hang pictures with command strips, not how to hang command strips. It's kind of self-explanatory.